The views, ideas, and content of well seekers and their guests are their own opinions, and you should always seek additional professional help around any of the issues discussed here on Well Seekers. Welcome to Well Seekers. I'm Lucia, and we are continuing our series on anxiety in 2020 and ways to find and feel better in the midst of all the layered chaos that has been happening. We are now in the holiday season, which just brings up even more challenges for so many people. Um, holidays can bring up a lot within families, within yourself in general, and this year, um, with more isolation, um, sometimes even more connectedness within families if you end up not leaving and you spend even more time together when you normally wouldn't, right? There's so many different angles, challenges, layers happening in general around the holidays, but specifically in 2020. Um, so this series so far, we've talked about, um, if you haven't listened to the three other shows before this, we've talked about um, what anxiety is, why in 2020 it's different, what you can do about it in 2020. Um, we talked about floating as a tool, and this week we are talking about meditation as a tool. Um, our guest is Swami Veridin. Swami's been on the show before uh, talking about meditation, and in this episode, um, Swami and I are going to talk about ways in 2020 specifically um, and getting a little deeper on meditation, bringing in um, a different angle on meditation, um, one that you maybe haven't heard before, meditation to, to try in a different approach, a different way. Um, Swami is a good friend of mine, an amazing professional when it comes to meditation, um, has studied all over and just practices it in his daily life. But what I love about Swami the most is even with all his expertise um, and experience, he can break it down in such a simple way. And I feel like now more than ever, we need simple. We need to take this complex information that complex research, complex information, complex ways, and we just need it simple. Um, because there's so many pressing things in all of our lives. So that's what we aim to do here at Well Seekers. Is, this is one of your first times listening to the show, is provide you with simple and real information, um, information from some of the leading experts, from some of my personal friends, um, broken down in a way that you can use it every day in your lives to find and feel better from the mind down. Um, so join us, come back, hang with us. We'll be back in just a few seconds with meditation guru and personal friend Swami Verdon helping us manage anxiety in 2020. We'll be right back on Well Seekers. After a long day, taking time to love yourself and your friends and your family more well can be a challenge. We're so burnt out and exhausted and stressed from working so hard during the day, we forget to love the people and the places and the things that are important to us. Well, Lucia Knight is here to help. We're gonna be a retreat and a treat for your day. A place to laugh, to connect, and to learn to love yourself and others more well. We're gonna talk about relationships, ways to sleep better. We'll have expert guests, personal stories, maybe even a musical guest or two. We'll share behind the scenes into my own life as well, my friends, my family, and of course, my relationships. So close the door on your day and light up your night with Lucia at night. Also, make sure to check out more at wellseekers.com for simple and real life ways to bring wellness home. I'll see you tonight on Lucia at night. You're listening to Well Seekers, a show where the journey is just as important as the destination. And we're back on Well Seekers with our next guest. And he's not just a friend of, you know, I keep saying friend of the show, but really your family, because everyone that's part of our seekerhood is a member of our family. So I'm just putting aside the word friend. You're part of my family and you're part of the Well Seekers family. So if you're part of the Well Seekers family, he's part of your family too. Swami Veridin meditation guru. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. Thanks for having me. I'm glad I'm part of this family. I mean, my family is really dyslexic and, and uh, this, uh, this uh, functional. So this family <laughs> is a family I can definitely be part of. <laughs> I don't, it just cut out for a second. So I'm just going to repeat it for everyone. He said his family's dysfunctional. So um, you know what? 
everyone's family has some level of dysfunction, some more than others, that's for sure. Um, so yeah. I relate to you, Swami, and I love you, and you are part of my family in every sense of the word. So thanks thanks for saying that. <laughs> Um, we, so we're doing a, a series, Swami, on anxiety in 2020 specifically and how it's so much different um, than any other time when people maybe have general anxiety disorder. It's almost as if everyone has general anxiety disorder or could be diagnosed with that, it feels like. Um, but not everyone. But there has been a significant increase. We talked last week about how there's been a four, almost 400 percent increase on Mental Health America site taking the quiz for anxiety and do do I have an anxiety disorder? Yeah. So obviously everyone is anxious right now or depressed. Um, there's depression obviously has increased exponentially as well. I just felt like no one better to come on and talk to us about some of the principles of meditation, um, which we all know is a key to helping reduce anxiety um, and stress, general stress. So First of all, how are you doing in, in 2020 with your anxiety? I'm doing pretty well, actually. I'm doing very well. I'm surprisingly doing well, but I'm always anxious. So I'm actually, uh, I'm getting actually anxious right now, telling you I'm not anxious. It's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, we, like, wh- why am I not anxious? I don't know. I should figure it out. I got to mm. do that test. <laughs> Just to confirm that you're not anxious? I am not anxious, no. Yeah. Well, I would, let's take a step back. I'm a very low scale of anxiousness. Mm. And um, part of the reason I'm not so anxious was, is because I've been meditating for 10 years, because I've been looking internally for 10 years, um, because I've been working on different methods, meditation, breathing, uh, diet, really focusing on mm. what to work on mm. when, 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 things like this happen. Now, it's sort of like, I'll consider mental health almost like uh, your savings account. You know, there's a lot of people, a lot of us who live beyond our means, right? So when a job loss happens, we lose our mind. We get very, very, very anxious because we don't have the money and we don't know when when we're going to get the money. Things are all out of place. But things were always out of place. Mm -hmm. You just didn't see it and you didn't want to see it. Mm. And what this mental health is doing in, in, in this uh, world right now, the COVID, really bringing people back to reality. Mm. Expectations are gone. People are getting back to our reality. You know, we all have a sense of facade, per se, a fakeness we like to present to the world. And there's nowhere to run anymore, right? If you're at home, you can't go anywhere. Mm. Mm-hmm. All those days we complain about going to work, We can't go to work. Yeah, I think that it's not even because we did do a series on COVID and COVID is actually, you know, obviously I meant a big part of this, but there is so much more, right, that's transpired over the summer, just societally, um, (laughs) the past election, um, since we just had an election and everything around the election, um, just so much happening on, a glo- and then if you, we just take it out, right, globally, um, things that are happening in other countries as well, and the implications of our country, and that we're realizing how much of a global community we are, right? And all of a sudden, in our homes, this global crisis has come into our homes. I feel like it used to be a barrier, right? There used, there was always a some sort of buffer that made us feel like we had some control and the world's problems or the nation's problems or your problems weren't my problems, right? Yeah. Like I had my stuff under control. And I think what has happened, and this is just my personal belief and somewhat experience with um, just knowledge from my studies as well. But as a society, we've really been forced to um, pay attention to each other because it's your stuff is impacting me, right? And the world stuff is now impacting me, right? So we don't have that layer of control that we thought we had and that layer of protection over our lives and controlling our lives. And that can be scary when you felt in control of your life, regardless of whether you were or not, right? And then that control is like, it's all gone. Like you're in control of nothing. I'll never control my life, which is why I'm so calm right now. I'm like, oh, I'm not the only one. <laughs> Nobody else is. Well, I Listen, do. Maybe I don't need those static, <laughs> static pills and that anxiety pill. I, I do have to say, 
Um, again, on a personal note and a professional note, people that I know, in in some cases, this can trigger trauma, right? It's person to person variable. Okay. I don't want to say this is across the board because everything is so variable. But I know people who have such resilience because they have been through so much in the past and they realized long ago they don't have control of anything. And so this yeah. has been a much easier process for them. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, you know, I consider this... Uh have you ever watched NASCAR or this new NASCAR that's called the pit stop? You yeah. know what a pit stop is? Of course, of course. I consider this a spiritual pit stop. And the pit stop mm. really is for us on a conscious level to become at peace in certain areas of our lives where we've been unpeaceful. And some of us, it could be money. Some of us, it could be career. Some of us, it could be relationships. Some of us, it could be our body. Some of us could just be our just self-acceptance. It's very easy, and it's been very easy for all of us with social media, number one, to put up a facade. Number Mm -hmm. two, it's been very easy. Listen, you know how it is when you get past 22, you get busy, you start Mm -hmm. working, Mm -hmm. you start dating. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to get into into that sort of that rut per se, but that we get very accustomed to what we're accustomed to. So going to work, hanging out with friends, complaining about work, talking about work, dating complaining about our relationships or being grateful for our relationships. Very rarely do we get deep, deep, deep into reality Mm -hmm. because unless there's something that really happens and this is a pit stop, it it just, it happened for all Mm -hmm. of us. Like, wait a second, all this, we got it. I'm not that peaceful. I'm actually not that happy Mm -hmm. in certain areas. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so that evaluation time, right. And then, the anxiety that comes with sort of needing to stop and evaluate and feeling out of control and watching, taking in the news, right? And I have to say, I had to lean in. I sort of had an awakening. I was, I don't want to say fine because I don't know if anyone was fine, but I was doing fairly well through it all until a couple of weeks ago. And I just had some circumstances change in my own personal life. And it was like, um, well, I should just, it was my birthday. And I really hit sort of a space of like, I'm not where I want to be personally right now on my birthday. And it took me to like a place where I found myself being anxious, being depressed, and then not having a lot of connection with people, right? Because of COVID. Um, And it took me about a week. And then I finally was like, I need, you know what the choice is, right? Fall deeper into my anxiety and my depression or choose the tools that I, that I, talk about and that I'm saying I'm going to practice, which is like you said, which is reaching out to people, getting outside of myself and seeing what other people are doing. I'm before, before we started recording, Swami asked me how I was. And I was like, yeah, I was not in a good space, but now I'm trying to trust. Like I have an infinite mind that only sees so little. I mean, a finite mind that only sees so little. And I'm trying to trust the infinite possibilities that actually do exist that the universe, I believe in God and a higher power personally, but that are going to come to me, right? And like trying to get outside of my own thoughts and my own limited viewpoint to understand that there is so much more. And the way for me to do that, right, is exercising like you talked about, eating well, like you talked about, drinking a ton of water, which I was absolutely not doing those few weeks where I wasn't feeling well, right? All of this stuff actually... I feel like sometimes even I was guilty of it years and years ago. Like, just give me the solution, right? But the solution really is all that stuff, like eating well, nourishing yourself. And what we're going to talk about, which is, which is breathing and meditation. Does any of that, what I just said, make sense? Yeah, you hit it on the nail. I think so. I mean, a part of me, you know, the aha moment I got was for me, you know, in Buddhism, there's something called the middle way. And I don't know if you're familiar with it, but the middle way is not getting too obsessive over an idea or uh, attached to obsessiveness, per se, attached to results. And the other end of it is not getting so um, lazy and, and just feeling bad for ourselves and, you know, just complaining. That's the other end of it. And Buddhism, the middle way, what they're trying to say is the middle ground, the middle way is really just being not too high, not too low, not too left, not too right not being attached to our desires. It's okay to desire, but not being attached to our desires and not falling into a rut where we're consistently in a rut where we're like, yeah, whatever, screw it. We're just going to, 
you know, be lazy and, and just complain. Mm -hmm. The aha moment I got from you is it's okay to be okay. Did you just say it's okay to be okay? Yeah. I just was saying that all last week, Swami. Oh, really? Is that okay? No, I'm joking. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's one of the most profound statements. It is okay to not be okay, but it's also okay to be okay. And so often when you come from a trauma background, which again, I do have a trauma background, right? And I hear about trauma backgrounds in every, my multiple careers. So when you come from a trauma background and we've been traumatized right now, you immediately go into, I sh- okay, I sh- I'm gonna, you know, naturally not be okay, but it is okay yeah. to be okay. Well, also I would say for you and I, on a side note is we're in the, you know, in the broadcast, entertainment media world as well where it's never okay to be okay because there's Mm. always a goal (laughs) always uh a far-reaching you know title always some far-reaching desire Mm. that oftentimes even without realizing we become attached to Mm -hmm. so the reason there's so much such depression and such anxiety in hollywood and even now silicon valley now kids are coming up and saying i want to make a billion dollars in this company well that's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. That's more money. And it sounds kind of simple, but it's not. It's a lot of these kids and most of these kids have not even made a hundred thousand dollars profit. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I personally haven't made a hundred thousand dollars profit. I made good money, but not a profit of mm-hmm. something. And mm-hmm. everyone's like Billy dollars and this comparison. So saying it's okay. To, it's okay. is is relevant for you. I, you myself, and also people in the entertainment startup entrepreneurial world because it's sort of this idea of that if you're not a billionaire you're not successful that's completely wrong oh it's so wrong and i i honestly i learned that a while ago when i crossed from pure entertainment into the helping profession and media right like combining them both to help people through media yeah i had a big shift where it was like This is actually, it's okay to be okay. And it's okay to not be a billionaire. It's okay to just have enough money to take care of a family, right? Yeah. One of the things that, um, again, and here's the irony of life, right? Like just when I was ready to step into that role fully was when I got divorced, which is so the irony of the universe, but I can't tell you how many times I look at those circulars. I don't know if they're still called that, but my Nana from Boston used to call them circulars. Um, they're like coupons that come in like Sunday that used to come in Sunday papers, but they'll come in my email now. Yeah. My like dream six years ago or seven years ago was like, I can't wait to like go to the store and shop for my family. Like that was my goal. And that was mm-hmm. like pure bliss contentment. And that's a huge shift from like, you need to look this and look that. Like, to me, that's my, has always been like one of my goals. To go to the store and talk to your family? To go to the store and just like shop for my family to make like an awesome meal um, yeah. for them. Like that literally, like, it, like I'm going to start crying, but it like was my absolute, like I remember being like coming from, Because, you know, having a national show and doing all this stuff in media, coming off of music and then broadcast and then having that letdown of coming off of a national show and saying like, you know what? I actually like the idea of like shopping at Stu Leonard's, which is like a local grocery store in Connecticut, more than I do like going back to L.A. right now. Yeah. So I think recalibrating goals is okay. And I don't think it's lesser, better, worse. It just is. And that's hard to come to. Right. Right. I mean, it's tough to do that. It's also tough to realize and accept you're going to be okay. You're okay. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Because all of us, every single one of us, not every single one, good a number of us, forget Hollywood, forget broadcasting, all have dreams and goals. Mm -hmm. It could be a picket fence. It could be a husband. It could be kids. It could be a wife. It could be a great paying job. It can be many things, but the reality has hit, you know, right Mm -hmm. now. So Mm -hmm. that's why there's such anxiety. So I'm doing much better, but yes, I do. For me, it's uh, that career stuff that sort of gives me anxiety. Oh, wait, should I care? Do I not? Why do I not care? I mean, it plays in your mind, but it's um, 
very important to repeat the mantra we say. It's okay to be okay. It's okay to be okay. I love it. Swami, I think a, gr- a great look into what may be happening in your life right now as a listener, um, in Swami's life, in my life, globally, I think we're all experiencing different things like this, reevaluations, reprioritizing, looking at areas that we're coming up short that's causing this anxiety and stress. Anything else that you're seeing out there, uh, Swami's on the West Coast, on and I'm on the East Coast, on the West Coast, in your life, in your orb, with the work you're doing that you feel like is raising anxiety levels? I mean, I think that anxiety is just a sense of what people want to do in their lives. They're very unhappy. Mm. And I think people have realized that there is a sense of toning back in and tuning back in and going, wait a second, is all the money and the success really worth it? And money and success is great, but do I really love my job? Do I really love where I live? There's a lot of people still in Silicon Valley moving out. There's a lot of people in LA moving out because it's so expensive. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't need to be here. Why are we here? Why mm-hmm. were we here? Mm-hmm. And that's probably New York City and you're saying in big cities, people moving to the suburbs saying, wait, I can live a better life. I don't need to be here anymore. Absolutely. So, so Swami, we've talked about this a little bit because um, Swami, of course, of Indian descent. I love your name. Thank you. What does Swami mean? Teacher, enlightened one. Oh my gosh. I think that's appropriate. Do you? Yeah, totally. It's great, isn't it? It is. It did well. Want to know what my name means? Because it's obviously Italian. What? It means the light. Oh, the light. Interesting. Yeah. And Lucia at night is my sister show. And it's like, close your door in your day and light up your night. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. That's cute. Um, so in your experience as a culture you can break this down any way you want to Eastern versus Western, the United States versus other parts of the world. I know you've spent time studying in various areas. Do you think culturally there's anything going on in any way you've looked at, at anxiety right now? Well, I think we're moving towards the Eastern, Eastern way of thought, which is you look at just society wise, you're, you're looking at Eastern way of thought, which is meditation, mindfulness, spirituality, diet. If you go to the Zen Buddhism centers, Diet's very important. They eat vegetarian food. They don't eat any fish. Um, they meditate, and they're very simplistic. So uh, in the Zen Buddhism, it's a uh, diet. And also in, in India, meditation's big there. Diet's big there. A lot of people there are vegetarian. Mm. And I would say simplistic there. When I went to India, it was really intriguing to me because here in America, on the Western side, Western world, I know a lot of Indians, and they're all very ambitious externally ambitious, career-wise ambitious, and money-wise ambitious. When I went to India, what I, what I found intriguing is they're very ambitious family-wise. They have big families, and they all live right next to each other, sometimes in the same house. And family and love and kids and grandkids are a major theme there. Mm. Whereas here, it's always been external. The American dream um, has always been the forefront of Americans. I think what's changed is we're getting to the Eastern mindset where maybe the American dream is not the American dream. And what is the American dream anymore? Mm. I don't think anyone really clearly knows or can define it. Mm-hmm. So things are changing in, in that, in that lifestyle. I think consciously we're changing that lifestyle. If you, even if you look at sort of like masculinity, you know, before you had the Marlboro man and you had uh, sort of very masculine white males. Now what you're looking at that's, you know, let's say even football players were like the masculine, cool kids. Now what you're seeing is masculine. Is uh, what people are looking for is UFC, martial arts, which is Brazilian fighting, which is Eastern world, also Brazilian. I agree with the Eastern versus Western. I do think though there are some cultures. I mean, and again, my culture is Italian, where family, of course, is the emphasis. I have a good friend from um, Brazil. Family is the emphasis of life. Right. So not Eastern, but sometimes I do think what is the American dream? Right. And what has happened to American families? Um, No answers, just questions. These are things I, I consider because I just know lots of different things going on growing up. But family from the Italian standpoint is everything having a family, being with a family, right? And it sounds like same in Indian culture. So is it Eastern versus Western or is it the United States? I don't know. I mean, maybe just consciously, I think people are, the United States are 
I don't see so much ambition anymore. Does that make sense to you? I see more acceptance, more mm. relationship now, mm. family. Mm -hmm. So it could be the United States. Mm -hmm. it's definitely. And when I meant Western, I mean United States, by the way. Um, so maybe this is just the United States. But there's a significant shift. I can sense a shift happening. I can sense a shift just for me because I've been doing meditation for over 10 years, yoga for 15. And for a long time, people thought it was like, you know, strange, weird, kind of like, yeah, it's, oh, it's all right. We don't need it. Especially men. But now I have men calling me and messaging me and saying, hey, I want to learn mindfulness and breathing and meditation. And it seems that now people are becoming very aware of it and are, are very intrigued by meditation and self-help and mental health. Yes. Yes. You know, one of the things that I think, so I agree with that. One of the things that I think that's been a 2020 revelation. Yeah. And also we keep saying mind body, which I've said this in the last episodes and I'm just going to keep saying it until the revolution and shift happens. But I think there's a couple things with that. One, I think that um, we always say mind body and we make that separation and we don't realize your mind is part of your body. Your brain is right. part of your body. So if you want physically good health, you're going to need to attend to your brain health. I wish we started calling it that because therapy and these mo meditation, right? These are evidence-based modalities. There's scans that neuroscientists do after someone gets something like CBT or does meditation to see that there's actually a change in the way neurons communicate with each other, right? right. There's a change in the size of the amygdala, which is our emotional response. And sometimes it's enlarged and due, enlarged due to trauma yeah. and different things like meditation cha literally changes the size of your amygdala. Absolutely. And also the, you know, the, the, Stomach is often called the second brain because the gut feeling. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever, and you and your listeners, have you ever had that gut feeling, they say? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, oh, something doesn't feel right. Oh, something does feel right. Mm -hmm. And you can't, and you don't know why that is. It's not like it's uh, a negative thing always. It could be a good thing. Like, oh my God, why did I, why did I go to this party? Something told me to go to this party or go to this, you know, restaurant and where I met my boyfriend or my girlfriend. Something told me to come here where I got a job or something told me to come to this school. Well, listen, a lot of our schooling is based on gut. Like, oh, wait a second. I, this, you know, we get into colleges and then we go, wait, this college just feels better than the other college. We don't know why. Education is very similar. I just like this college better. Yeah. And that's our gut feeling. There's something in the gut and it's uh, the gut is the second brain. It's because there's more neurons in the gut than any other part of your body, even in your brain. So neurons are what tell your brain what to do, depending on which part of the brain it's getting communicated with. So because there's more neurons there. Do you think the neurons, as far as diet goes, like Zen centers, they don't have any meat and you have a positive meditation or Indian meditation. Our ancestors were against meat too. And now I'm not, I love my, I love me some pepperoni pizza. I'm not gonna lie to you, okay? I love me some pepperoni pizza. <laughs> So I ain't gonna mess around with that. But I'm wondering if I actually quit coffee last week mm. and I've been having tea and my gut, I had a whole whole stomach issue the last two weeks. I had all these sort of like, it's all like toxins coming out of my body. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's all that coffee. My, for a week and a half, my stomach was completely tore up. And I was like, that's weird. What, what happened? Like, oh, I quit coffee. That's mm. interesting. It's, 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 and I'm wondering for you, and we're, we're not going to get too much into diet. We'll talk about it another time. Diet-wise, do you think diet has a huge effect on consciousness or depression or anxiety? Absolutely. It's proven. Evidence-based. It's proven. It's just, there's no difference. Your neurons and your brain are made out of the same foundations, building blocks, amino acids that other parts of your body are. It's like saying if you eat protein, are, are your arms going to get, you know, bigger and you're lifting weights, right? Yes, because of right. the way that food gets digested and proteins are built and the foundations and building blocks of amino acids. And yes, it's another conversation. Um, and 
not an expert in this area by any means, but absolutely have a pretty strong foundational grasp of it. Um, personally, again, and professionally, because I'm on a special diet. But yes, the short answer is, how could it not? Your brain is made out of the building blocks that the rest of your body is made out of. So if you need to feed yourself a certain way to have good liver health or to have good muscle tone or to have good heart health, then you're going to need to feed your brain a certain way to have good brain health. I think for some reason we've had this taboo as a society on mental health, right? I think if we start recognizing mental health for what it is, which is brain health, (laughs) then we may start to see how this all actually does matter. Does that make sense, Swami? It does. I'm studying more Buddhism right now. I'm taking a Buddhism class and I'm doing, I did a project on Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, if most people don't know, is a diehard uh, meditator Mm, mm -hmm. and a diehard Buddhist, actually. He's a Buddhist. Also, you know, I was just thinking about that because people, you know, he started meditation at 18. He had, he was a vegan for many years. I mean, almost his whole life he was a vegan. He meditated went for walks. Maybe that's why he is, his mind was so clear. His intuition, his gut feeling was so clear more than anyone else because he was doing it for so long and kept practicing at it. Absolutely. You know? And I think one, one note I do want to make though, is that if you have experienced trauma, it changes your, your, that gut feeling and it makes it really hard to have a gut feeling. So sometimes you do have to heal that trauma and it's going to take more than just a good diet or more meditation. All those, those will be components to get that gut feeling back. So just a word to anyone out there that has significant trauma. Swami, so before we let you go, I would love for, our, and I know our listeners would love this too, but um, just a final Final words on how to integrate meditation. I I just want to say Swami has talked about this a lot in our show. So if you want to learn more about how to integrate meditation easily, I'm going to put some links below. Um, If you have any quick words on that, we'd love to hear them. But I'd really love for you to lead us in a a meditation that we can take with us and maybe um, use in our 2020 daily lives. Okay, well, I mean, I'll do like a quick one minute meditation. Yeah. Um, What we're going to do is... um, this might help people for your listeners. I've had a couple people come up to me with insomnia issues. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Everyone. Major, major insomnia issues. And uh, I've worked with them, and they've almost, I will have to say, I, I use a technique, and most of them, almost all of them have been cured of it. Not completely, but they're sleeping better. So anxiety in 2020, insomnia is a huge issue. So this is a meditation to help with insomnia? Yeah. Love it. What we're going to do is find a comfortable spot. Relax your head. Relax your shoulders. Relax your mind. Breathing in and breathing out. Your eyelids are relaxed. Your jawline's relaxed. Your shoulders are relaxed. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And slowly count down from 50. 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take a deep breath in and take a deep breath out. And that's your meditation. One minute meditation. Love it. All right. I love you, Swami Verdon. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll be right back on Wealth Seekers. 
Today's lifestyle demands the best in wireless, and with Pulse Cellular, you have the best options available. Switch to Pulse Cellular for unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data, coast-to-coast -coast with no contracts, no credit checks, and no overage fees. One line for $65 or four lines for just $45 each, including hotspot, Wi-Fi calling, and 50 gigs per line. And for all you travelers, we got you covered in Canada and Mexico, plus text and data in over 210 countries worldwide, all with the best phones or bring your own that's pretty awesome get the best user experience on mobile at pulsecellular.com thanks for being part of the seekerhood we couldn't do this without you now back to the show Thanks so much again to Swami for joining us. We loved having him on the show. We always love having him on the show. Before we let you go, um, I just want to make sure that if you are struggling with anxiety, you know that, well, one, that there's help out there, right? That um, hopefully these tools help you. But if you need even more help, more professional help, never hesitate to reach out to a counselor or to a professional. Um, we say at the beginning of our, all of our shows, but now, especially during the holiday times, if you feel alone if you're struggling i i want to reiterate that and make sure people know that they aren't alone and there is help out there um so you can go on psychology today you can call 1-800-662-HELP it's a national helpline that can connect you to resources but whatever you do know you don't need to struggle alone second i just want to um give a little plug to our tool section that has so many different tools that you can take with you to help you um, in your journey to find and feel better. So uh, if you have some extra time, check out our tool section. I think that the, the shirts that have reminders, like the word, well, real, happy, joyful, I love those. I wear them to bed all the time. Um, that's my favorite place just because I like to be peaceful when I go to sleep. Um, so make sure to head over to the Well Seekers tool section. If you're listening on our website, just click tools. If you're listening on one of our many partner sites, um, head over to wellseekers.com and click on our tool section. You can also follow us on Instagram at Well Seekers and our sister show about relationships at Lucia at night. Um, and you can find me at Lucia Naz on Instagram of course, on Facebook and Twitter too, but you'll see me mostly on IG. So from all of us here at Well Seekers, we hope that you are um, finding and feeling better. And if you aren't finding and feeling better today, make sure to reach out for support. Know you're not alone. You don't have to do any of this alone. We're in this together. We have you and we love having you a part of our seekerhood, a part of our family. It truly, truly means so much. Um, so we will be back in two weeks with our next and the last show of the series um, talking about uh, ways that you can holistically feel better and incorporating more physical health uh, into your routines and your, your coming weeks and your last week of 2020. So make sure you stick with us. We'll be back soon here on Well Seekers. How would you like to join the conversation? Email us anytime at hello at wellseekers.com.